Yep. <laughs> hey everybody, Mike Rosso here, film photography podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the Canon 16 millimeter Scupic, and for this intro part of the video, we're shooting on the Canon 16 millimeter Scupic. So this does not, this video does not take the place of a tutorial. This is just an overview. It rolled out. Great. Perfect. Okay, folks. So before the rollout, what you just saw, hopefully, was the Canon Scupic footage. What we just saw was Canon Scupic footage shot on the Canon Scupic, and the roll in the camera of film rolled out. So here it is. Here is the Canon Scupic camera. It's a 16 millimeter motion picture camera. This was primarily used for news production in the 1980s, uh, news and what's known as B-roll, meaning shots that you get with a film camera where you don't need sound. So we just rolled out a 100-foot roll of film in the Canon Scupic, and I'm going to basically open it up and show you how to roll and what kind of film this takes. The Canon Scupic takes 100 feet of film in this can is what's known as a daylight spool. This is a aluminum spool <laughs> that holds 100 feet of 16 millimeter film. And this is an empty and it could be used as a take up. You could also purchase 100 foot rolls of Kodak film or of course, much larger rolls, like this is a 400-foot roll. And this 400-foot roll of film, if you opened it up, this is a smaller roll, but this is what it would look like. This is a effed roll of film. In other words, this roll has been exposed. It had some water damage, so I, used, I just use it as test film. You could use test film to test your camera to see if it's scratching your film, if, you know, run it through the gate to see if it's okay. Uh, but if you... Uh, if you, buy, if you buy the larger rolls of film, you can go in your home darkroom if you have uh, some rewinds, and you could pretty much roll your own. So the Canon Scupic, right now we're going to load it, and you open up this. In here is a tomb where it holds your film. So because this camera shoots on what's known as daylight spools, you could uh, change the film in this camera uh, in dim light. So you open up the camera. Oh, look at that. And here is the innards, <laughs> the guts of the film. So the first thing you want to do, when you're getting ready to change film, of course you want to have a film can or a black bag handy so that when you take the film you've shot out, uh, you prepare it for processing. So taking the film out, putting it into the black bag... So now it's ready for processing. By the way, here in the U.S., I've been sending my film to a place called Color Lab in Maryland. They've been doing all the processing for my Kodak Vision 3 film. So once you take your film out, move your empty spool over to the empty spool side so, to, so you can reload. And I'm going to reload uh, a roll of Kodak 800T. I rolled this myself in my darkroom onto a daylight spool. Always make sure your camera is on. Okay. Take my film out. Ugh. <laughs> As you can see, I'm very non-scientific in doing this. Maybe even a little careless, dare I say, a little, ca a little careless. Um, but you want to make sure... Uh, well, first of all, your, the ends of your film, you want to make sure it's a nice, neat cut. And uh, here in the camera is a little cutter. Look at that. Yep, want to make sure to get this little piece out of there. You don't want to jam up your camera. Madness. It's total madness. So you, <laughs> All right, so you put your reel in here. Snaps right in. I usually take this out, the empty, until I'm ready. And now I'm ready to load the camera. And it literally 
it literally just you just follow the damn you just follow the damn arrow. Okay, I'm almost ready. Now I'm gonna crank it up, as they say. That's it. That's it. Let me a little bit more. Okay. Now I can take my end. <laughs> now I can take my end, put it into my daylight spool. And then just do a little quick little test. Look at that. You see that? Now we will take the tomb cover. Beautiful. In case you were wondering how this camera is powered, up here on top is a battery compartment. Here is a battery that was recently reselled by a company called Do All. Do you remember those guys, John? Here's a battery. I usually charge the battery about every three rolls of film. And if you don't want to use the onboard battery, there's also a port here where you could have an over-the-shoulder battery. That's it, really. You have your off switch, your auto switch. You could do manual f-stops if you like. Here is where you set your frames, 16 frames per second, 24, 32, 48, or 64. The faster you go, you would do slow motion. Back in the day, you didn't have, uh, you know video files where you could do slow motion in your in your editing program you used to have to do it the old fashioned way which would be to burn a hell of a lot of film and then here you set your ASA or ISO as they call it these days so I'm shooting 800 ISO so I'm going to put it at the juiciest <laughs> which is 640 and it's going to overexpose it a little bit but because it's um it's going to underexpose it. Overexpose it or underexpose it? The exposure is not going to be totally correct, but that's okay because it's negative film and it can be fixed uh, at the lab, as they say. When you're in auto, there's an electric eye. You have a beautiful zoom lens. This is a fixed lens. The lens does not come off. Nice cap. And a nice, a nice red cap. So that's the overview of the Canon Scupa camera. As I mentioned in all of my videos, my video is not meant to be an instruction manual. I highly suggest you go online, or if you're going to purchase a camera, ask the seller if they're going to, if they send the instruction manual with it. This came with the instructions book, and like most things I do, I barely read it. It's I don't recommend that. Uh, if you're a by the seat of your pants kind of guy, <laughs> kind of guy, then you could do that. Um, but you may be asking, well, what can we see some footage other than the, the short intro? Absolutely. I've been doing camera tests all summer long in the year 2017. And first up is a camera test. When I first got the camera, I shot on some Kodak Ektachrome 7251. That's the stock number. It's a 400 ISO film, and it is expired. When? I have no idea. I bought it on eBay. I'm guessing it's 15 to 20 years old. And considering the age of the film, I think it turned out pretty well. Now, but because this was the first time I was out using the Scupic, I was doing a lot of zooming. And I was zooming, I was zooming, focusing, and then pulling out. And as you can see by some, some of this footage, it's out of focus. There's a lot of it out of focus. At first, I was a little bit worried. And I'm like, oh, my God. My camera lens is busted. Because, I mean, when you buy a used camera, sometimes you don't know if someone dropped it. I mean, even though everything is solid on this camera, it could have took a hit. And if it took a hit, the lens elements could have, could have uh, you know, been shifted a little bit. And that would give you not so good focus, as they say. But, so I went on and tested a second roll of film. Uh, I used Kodak Vision 200T film uh, at John Fideli's uh, band. John and Mark Dalzell and Kevin Neblong were playing some uh, 80s-inspired music. And as you can see, well, you can see there's a lot of grain. Once again, this was an expired film. This is not brand new film. But I didn't do a lot of hokey zooming. I got my shot, kept my shot, moved on, focus up, get my shot, 
And for the most part, everything's in focus, so I'm very pleased with the focusing. Now, talk about grain. Uh, then I switched to Kodak 500T. By the way, these are all tungsten films. Uh, the, the 200T, the 500T, and I'm going to talk about the 800T. They're all indoor light films. The first roll I shot was daylight. So 200T, now 500T. As you can see, the grain has increased because this is a different stock from a different batch, and I have no idea how old this film is. Now, strangely enough, when we switch to 800T, the grain gets tighter, which means that this is a newer film and it was better stored, meaning someone stored it in a refrigerator. So if you're out there, if you own a camera like this and you're shooting all sorts of stuff, hanging out, maybe some surfing videos or skateboarding videos or your family like I did, if you're buying on eBay, just buy or beware that if you're buying expired stocks, unless you, the person can confess to you, like, oh, this is from a movie set and it was refrigerated the whole time, you're going to get some grain. So the next, the next tests I'm going to do are with brand new Kodak Vision 3 stocks, and I'm expecting that to be beautiful, as they say. Uh, that's really it. As I said, this was just an overview I'm sure you may have a lot of questions. You can always write to me at uh, <laughs> podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. Uh, wait a minute before we go. Hold on. Check the smarty phone. Come on. Hold on. Oh, there we go. I just want to show you our cameraman today, Mr. John Fideli. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> 